Hello, neighbors. This is Robert J. Ray, president of the Organism Chapter 4. <laughs> Coming to you again, uh, I put out a lot of videos on my professional development process, dealing with life and living, and uh, what what is the best way to uh, enjoy your life and destructive patterns in, in different lives. I did the suicide prevention and the you know, rape uh, prevention. And I just recently did four basic needs and the mental health. And my mentor, when I was being trained by him, and uh, he was, they called him like a similar to of Jesus Christ. And I was uh, one of his disciples. I was uh, his protege, as a matter of fact. And uh, his name was Rum. And uh, Rum always said, uh, stressed. To air all his disciples, plus me, that there was always more. Whatever there was going on and whatever you learned, there was always more to learn. And that's the uh, training that I had, and that's what I've already always uh, carried my uh, knowledge and my rationale to my clients and my disciples that. Yeah, truly is always more. And then after he died, I found that out even more. Uh, because when he was on his on his deathbed and with acute leukemia in 1976 down in Ann Arbor, uh, I was he was doing all my training then. I was in training at the organism then. And uh he was down with this leukemia and I was really angry with God, so to speak. And why would you take a man like this who is doing such great things and healing people and and uh, making people's lives successful and and why would you take why would you take him? But he told his wife, uh Cynthia, that outside of the fact that he was dying, things could be better. That really Knock me for a loop. That's not about how could a man that's just getting ready, he was a 42, just getting ready to become a billionaire with this process, and uh, he was taking death so easily. It, it, it just didn't, I just couldn't fathom it. But I remember he said that there's always more. And he knew that he was going on in, to a high degree of life and living, but at that, that, that time, I didn't know what it was. So uh, we always at the organism say we deal in genuine truths. The organism chapter four. That's what we base our counseling and therapy and, and uh, process on is uh, making sure you get the genuine truth so you can be on a solid foundation. And a lot of times people would ask me about other things and would say, well, do you have the genuine truth about this? Uh, do you have all of the answers for that? And uh, and I told him, yeah, I, I have that too. I mean, I, I do other things. I mean, as far as uh, being healthy and uh, using herbs and being a an herbalist and getting people uh, uh, recovered from uh, diseases, debilitating diseases like uh, cancer and heart problems and and all other uh, diseases that's uh, that's killing people now, I can do that. I've done that. I've healed people of their diseases like cancer and all of this stuff. I kept my mother alive 20 years with cancer. It took four cancers to kill her. Uh, but I kept her alive all of those years. And uh, So uh, recently, individuals asked me, well, what about the, uh, the universe? Do you know anything about that? And, uh, do you have all the answers for that? And uh, he was surprised when I told him, yes, I have that too. Matter of fact, I've been studying uh, the universe and how it was created and uh, why it was created. See, this is what you got to understand, that just because people uh, project on how the universe was created and a lot of scientists do the same thing, and the uh, two that they they gave more recognition is the ones that came up with the Big Bang Theory. And uh, 
which I was when I was, I would think I was real young when that came out. And I didn't even buy into that then. Uh, I could not see how uh, a world that was so orderly the way it was and a universe that seemed to be so perfect as it was could be created by a big explosion. It just didn't make sense. And by the by, I came into that information and that knowledge to let me know exactly how it was created and uh, why it was created. Now, I'm going to share with you some things about that creation, uh, which is going to knock a lot of scientists out of control and a lot of you people also. But that's just because you don't know. It. And this information has been in the world for, for two or three centuries. The same information that I'm going to give you has been in the world for centuries. But mostly scientists, they've been had their head in the sand trying to figure out how it all happened by the effects of it. But everything has an end, cause and effect. But scientists in this world, they only look at the effect, and then they try to look at the cause. But if you know the end of a, a thing, you can almost determine why it was uh, created and how it was created. So I'm going I'm to share some things, some generalities of how the universe was created, and then. I'm going to share with you why it was created. I think that would be the best way to do it. And uh, the first thing you have to realize is that uh, for long years back in the most ancient times, in the ancient time when when the world, Earth, this world was first created, and that's when they all was created, which is not only a little over 6,000 6, years ago. You hear scientists throw around a hundred billion, a billion of this. No, the, the world has not been created but it lived about a little more over 6,000, maybe close to 7,000 years ago. And you can uh, understand this because the people only start keeping history. I know when we read a history about it, they started t talking about Mesopotamia and the Euphrates River Valley and all of that. But it was even people even before that because it was uh, most ancient people. And these were the first people that was created. And uh, the reason for that is that the world had to be half caretakers. And, and, and uh, the infinite man, who that's who I, I discovered who God was, the infinite man, he created the world so that people could be on it. So that they could tend it, they could they could do the crops and gather in the fruit trees. Why would you create a lot of fruit trees on planets and uh, nobody to gather it and, and eat it and use it? So it just didn't make any sense to me. But when I went to reading the writings, which shares all of this information with you, if you are uh, open enough to receive it, and I was just blessed enough. For my mentor to open me up some, and then uh, I was opened up further by the infinite man himself. So I'm going to be sharing the genuine truth with you about how the universe was created and about some things in it, and maybe even about <coughs> the uh, inhabitants on the planet Mercury. I, that's the only one that I'll uh, talk about in this particular session. But mostly, he, people just wanted to ask me, about the uh, universe and uh, and UFOs, which I'll cover that uh, before the, this video is over. So now, the most ancient people, they knew how everything was created because they talked to angels back at that time. Because when the, when the infinite man created the world for you to live in, he also created some rules for you to live by. And these rules was you don't kill your neighbor, don't steal from your neighbor, don't try to have sex with your neighbor's wife. And these uh, rules was all over the universe. It was universal rules that he did. So I'm just going to really speak about this world being created. And uh, and you can determine that all the rest of them was created similar to the, to the way this world was created. Now you have to realize that in order for this world to exist, it has to have a soul. And the soul for this earth is a spiritual world. And that spiritual world 
was created first. Now, it's two worlds. It's the spiritual world, and it's the natural world we live in. And it's a spiritual universe, and it's a natural universe. Because you can look up and see it every day, but it's a spiritual universe also. Now, before anything was created, there had to be something. And that something was the essence, divine love and wisdom of the spiritual God and divine human. You can call him that. There are a lot of people calling him God, and that's who he was. And what it, what was God at that time? He lived in this sun that sets above the spiritual heaven. He lived in this sun. Did anything exist but God and this sun, which is the spiritual sun? Now, when he decided to uh, create the universe and create the planets and the earths, who knows why he decided to do that? And it doesn't even matter. The issue is that he did do it, and now we can enjoy a life and happiness and uh, love and wisdom. Now, the first, this sun was the first thing that went out from the divine man, uh, God, or whatever you want to call him, the uh, essence of uh, love and wisdom. Nobody's ever seen God, uh, and no one ever will except the, uh, the infinite man himself, who was, they called Jesus. He was the only one that they said uh, was able to see God because he was in, in God's bosom. But that's a lot of uh, technical stuff you would have to know about that. But let's just say the divine God himself decided to create the universe. This is how it was done, as I read in the writings. It was a spiritual son. Now, the spiritual son, Went, sent this light and heat out, just like our sun does. It, it sends the light and heat out for us every day, and we can live and we can have uh, heat and light, and we can survive. Now, that spiritual heat and light, its essence is divine love and wisdom. So you can say that everything else was created by divine love and wisdom from that spiritual sun. The heat being the love and the light from that sun being the wisdom. Now, when that went out, the first time, when he first started to do it, and a lot of uh, church people say, and, and they read in the Bible, say uh, that God created the heaven and earth in seven days. See, this, 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 is a, this is a symbolism and means something else because if you understand, there was no time and space before the universe was created. So he couldn't have created it in uh, seven days because there wasn't no such thing as days and, and time <clears throat> when he created it. It wasn't anything but him and the spiritual son. So he sent out the heat and light beginning his creation. That heat and light had an atmosphere. In it. it had three atmospheres in that, in that uh, spiritual son. First, atmosphere was called the aura, A-U-R-A, I think that's the way you spell it. That went out so far, and that was created the first heaven, which was the highest heaven. Then after the aura, it went far as it could go, far as the aura could go, and then the ether took over, which was spiritual ether. That created the second heaven which was the middle heaven and called the spiritual heaven. Then as that went out for it could go, then you had a supernatural air, or you might have spiritual air, you might say. And that created the, the lowest heaven, which is the first heaven. And then from that, the spiritual world was created. That spiritual world is just a world like we live in, but it's only spiritual. Now, Let's pause right here and see where, where we've gotten to. The spiritual, the uh, divine man, <clears throat> the first thing from him, proceeding from that God, that divine man, was that atmosphere, was the sun and the atmosphere, the heat and light from it. There was three atmospheres created, three heavens created, and the spiritual world was created. Now, what has to take place now? Well, now you have to have a natural world, 
so that this spiritual world can have a foundation. It's just like when we are created in our mother's womb, we got a soul. Your soul comes from your father. He ejaculates that into your womb, into your into the female womb, and that that is a soul. That soul creates for itself a body. It takes nine months to do it. But the soul creates in the body. Even though that soul will live if, the, if it don't complete. And you know that by all of the abortions that females have now. And a lot of the doctors are talking about when does life occur? Can we uh, kill it? In, uh, can we have an abortion after 15 weeks and stuff like that? It doesn't matter what, where, when you do an abortion. You are murdering the, the, the human being in there. And, uh, but, his, but the spiritual human is going to live. If you abort the baby, the baby will be born in that spiritual world I just mentioned to you. It will be born in that world. And then it will grow up in that world. It will still become a little boy, a little girl, and it will grow up to be an angel. Now, same way with the spiritual world, it needs a foundation also. It needs, it's a spiritual, and you need a natural foundation for the, for the uh, spiritual world. What happens now, you say? Well, now, this, the uh, natural sons has to be created. And this is the way it was done. When that spiritual world went out, when it left on, went further out, then now this spiritual son created, you can't even count the sons that it created. But when it created the son, just, we just use in this universe. Now, you can just figure out how the rest of them are similar to this universe. When this universe was created, the spiritual son put out a son that was like a big egg, so to speak. And it was uh, like a big cauldron of fire, nothing but a big big uh, egg of fire, you could say. And within that egg of fire is where the planets was created. Okay, picture this. Sitting up in the space, you got the sun caught up, just bubbling in and getting ready to uh, become a, a sun uh, for, for the planets that's going to be created in this universe. The first sun that burnt out of that, that, that natural sun was the furthest planet in this universe here. The furthest one, either it's Jupiter, or, uh, I think they found a Pluto, but just say for, for, for knowledge sake that it was Jupiter. Jupiter was the largest planet now, and the first planet that birthed out of that sun. Now that, that's not hard for you to understand. You may not believe it, but you can see it. When Jupiter birthed out of that sun, it started to roll around that sun. And it kept rolling around that sun. And every time that it rolled around the sun, it moved a little farther away from the sun. And it kept doing this, going around that sun and going around it until it got way millions of miles from the sun until its orbit. It got so far out there, and then that was it. This is where Jupiter is going to be for the rest of eternity is in this zodiac and in this re uh, revolution. It's going to continue to make that revolution around the sun, but it would be in that area, in that position from here on out. So now that sun had birthed out, our sun had birthed out Jupiter, and, it, and right behind Jupiter, came Saturn after it was burped out and after it got far enough away not to collide with Jupiter, then it was burped out and it began to circle the sun. It's circling the sun around, getting out into its orbit where it was going to stay at all the time. So each planet in this universe 
worked out of the sun and turned around and it was a circle around that sun and until it got so far out there, Mercury would be the last one that was worked out and it would be the closest one to the sun. Now, Earth, our Earth, when it was birthed out, which is the third sun, I think from this, in this universe from the sun, when it birthed out, it kept going around the sun until it got 96, 93 million miles away from the sun. And that's where we are now. We are making our revolution around going through the zodiac every year for another for another 365 days we are going through that uh track and and, and we are in another year but we will always be 93 million miles away circling the sun for all eternity so 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 to speak so this is the way this universe was created and when i first uh, became aware of that and i read that i say now that really makes more sense than a big explosion. And then they just went out nearly willy and then all end up of where they were. But that just don't didn't seem to be a rational way to do anything, create anything, be creative. And I read that and uh I and it made sense to me. Now it may not make sense to you, but it made sense to me that that's the way a, a divine mind would be able to do something like that. Uh, uh, and and, the, and you don't can't even figure out what the divine mind is like because uh, we just not we ain't equipped with that type of intellect and intelligence and all to try to do that. So here we got this the natural universe now. We got our sun and we got all our planets out there, and we got people on all of them, and now we are living. Now, yes, how did he create the human beings? The myth on this on this planet is that there was a Adam and Eve, the first human beings on this planet. Now, when I first heard that when I was a little boy, I I, I, I didn't buy into it. They used to tell us this at church. They used to say Adam and Eve. And I would always be thinking, I say now, how could Adam and Eve, who the book show was white, you know, how could they create anybody that was another race? Uh, black, Japanese, Chinese, the Africans, or whatever. It just didn't just didn't call me. And 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 today. Uh, church people, they still claim it to that, but they can't explain where all these other races come from. You know, I think some, somebody said one time, well, uh, uh, when, when they had uh, uh, Cain and Abel, uh, Abel slew Cain, uh, Cain slew Abel, however, uh, and then he was cursed, and then uh, he was uh, turned into a black, a dark-skinned uh, man, and and it just seemed like it was just made up uh, BS, it seemed, seemed like it was. But they, they, this is the way they try to explain it. And then you say, well, where did he get another female to have any uh, generation and create any generation when it wasn't but two, just Adam and Eve? So it didn't really make any sense, and I know it don't make a lot of sense to you people out there now, but you don't know how to, how it happened. But I'm going to explain it to you now. The way the infinite man did it is that he created a race of people in every country in this world. He created a black couple in Africa who procreated that continent. He created uh, uh, a couple in, in Russia, a couple in, in Japan, a couple in China, and a couple in, in uh, 
America, this country, which was a Native American Indian. Now, don't that seem more reasonable and rational? Why would he just have this big world and just put two people on? But in all of this world, it was a paradise when it was first created. It, there was no such thing as harmful animals. There was no harmful insects. There was no harmful uh, weeds and uh, plants. Everything that the infinite man created was good. So you could almost eat anything that was uh, was in the world at that time, and, and it would give you some protein, and you could sustain yourself. But how it was created, and, and, and who was, and how he created the first uh, beings, would take too many volumes, and I would have to go into too many uh, minute particulars to show you how it was done. But I just give you an example now which I read in the Worship and Love of God. It was it was almost like he created it out of a, a tree. Human beings out of a tree. And uh, when he created it, the first human beings, now they were able to eat because they're in the uh, paradise. Then you would have uh, suckling uh, plants that that they could suck on, and everything that they touched was was almost ready to eat and suck and it edible, and they sucked until they got teeth, and then they was able to eat eat uh, fruit and stuff. Now this is just a, a general idea I want. Created the babies. The babies could suck anything anywhere they turned their mouth. That was uh, something to suck uh, milk milk out of uh, milk with uh, weeds that sustained them until they was able to. That they get teeth, grow teeth, and uh, then they were able to eat the fruit and everything, and then they they grew, and then they met, and then they started procreating. I mean, it may be hard for you to see it because if, if some people going to accept it, what I say, some people are not going to accept it, but they ain't going to understand how it happened. But oh, well, we can happen that way because the Bible said this and the preacher said this. And, and that's okay. You can do that. You can, you can go that way if you want to. But everybody's going to find out at, at some point in time when they die that <laughs> and wake up in the next world, they're going to say, well, I see now that Mr. Ray, Counselor Ray, said that there was another world. And uh, now I'm in it. I wonder because the other things he said have been true. And that's all we deal in is genuine truth. I wouldn't even be sharing if it wasn't for the genuine truth. So now we got the world populated. We got human beings of different races in all parts of this world. And that's the way the infinite man created. And as they grew, then they began to grow so until they met each other. And some nations met the other nation. So everybody was neighbor. It doesn't make any difference where you are on the planet. You're a neighbor to everybody else in the universe, so to speak. But it's specifically on this planet. Now, we got the spiritual universe created. Now we got the natural universe created. And now we got all the planets in their um, ecliptical cycle, in there where they go around zodiac cycle. And now we got the humans there, and we got animals on the planet. We got all noble animals, which is birds. We got all of the birds out there. And uh, so it's a paradise. And it and it stayed like this for who knows how many years. Maybe hundreds of years, maybe a thousand years. But then uh, by the by, people had to die. They might have lived to be 200 years old then with, with all of the the first fruit, first half, first vegetable, and everything like this. But eventually, this body would die, and it did. And so when people started to die, then they would wake up in the spiritual world. But this world was so close to the spiritual world until when your relatives died and was resurrected over in the spiritual world, then they could come back and visit you in this world because 
y'all were so in tune, y'all's mind and y'all's thoughts and love were so in tune with each other until y'all could communicate. So these first people became angels because they didn't have any sin that they had created. You know, the world hadn't changed. There hadn't been a you know, the big fall yet. So the people that died would go into the spirit world. They would go into heaven. And then they would be able to come back and visit their relatives from time to time and tell them, and tell them the beautiful things in heaven. And they were able to do that for who knows how long they were able to do that. But as time went on, people got further and further away from heaven and being able to talk to their relatives in heaven. And it got to the point where people in this world, they didn't even believe in heaven. So naturally, now these angels and the people of the spirit cannot visit you now because y'all are not on the same mental technology. Because you might have, it may have been after Adam and Eve, which was the church, it wasn't no two individuals. It was the rules that the infinite man had given all of the people in the world to live by. And it was just simply the Ten Commandments. That's all it was. Just live by these commandments and know that I'm your God and uh, worship me and uh, love me and love your neighbor. And that's what people did for, for years and years and years. And then all of a sudden, you had the, uh, the serpent thing came along, which it wasn't a, a real serpent. That, it was just the fact that people began to want what other people had, the neighbors. This is all it was. You was your temp you started being tempted now. You was tempted by what your neighbor had accumulated, or what his wife looked like. You was uh pulled to having what he had. And then you began to think that there wasn't any God. That maybe I'm God. I could be God. And this is what how the fall began. When when these people on this planet began to think that they was God or they knew what God knew, then they began to get further and further away from God. Because the only way you can be close to God is to is to do his commandments, love him. First, and love your neighbor as yourself. That was the only thing he asked of the human beings that he, he uh, put on this planet now. But then, by the by, people started separating themselves, started looking at what other people had, started being tempted by other men's wives, and they started sinning. So now, that church was gone with the wind. The Adams and Eve church was gone with the wind. So now, the infinite man had to bring another church in to replace this dead church, because that's what it was. It had been in effect since creation. The Adam and Eve church had been in effect. People had lived that kind of life since the creation. Now, that church had died out. Now we need another church. So what was the next church called? It was called the Noah Church. And you I know you remember this because they was talking about Noah that built the ark. I know everybody heard that because that's been, probably been in every Christian church. Preachers have probably preached about it for a long time. And they even claimed that they found an ark up in uh, on Mount Ararat, something like this. Uh, but there was no ark built. He didn't build a big boat. The ark was just another church, just like Adam and Eve didn't exist. There was no Adam man and was no Eve female. That was the church. That was the name of it. And the next church that came into being was the Noah ox church. And all that was is that him and the man chose Noah to bring about the next church that was in the world that would be for these people and their genius and how they was thinking now. They could no longer communicate with angels, which they could do while they was in that Adam and Eve church. They could communicate. 
But they had cut off all of those things by sinning and thinking that they was God and believing that they was God. Now he had to create another church for them to receive and start to uh, so that he could they could still be in touch with God, but yet they wouldn't be able to communicate with the angels like they did. They wouldn't be able to see them anymore. So Noah created this church for the next generation of uh, individuals that was in the world then. And, and Noah's church was known all throughout uh, the Middle East, out through Egypt, and out, even out through Africa and like this. But it was just a church, you see. And this church was propagated throughout all the land and then all the races of people. And then it got to be the church of the, uh, the Israelites, you know, which would later become the Jews, which that's what they call them now. But before then, they were known as the Israelites. So, so they lived with this Noah's church for a long time. I, they, they named the ages, but it's not really. They just, just remember, they lived for a long time, the Noah's church did. And people worshiped in that church for a long time. And uh, they worshiped, and then that church started dying out. And in that church, they had what was called correspondence. This was the greatest science in the world at one time. It was called the science of correspondence. I know you never heard of it, so don't be trying to look it up anything. You would probably would never find it anywhere in the scientific journals or nothing. But it was the greatest scientist in the world at one time, the science of correspondence. And what was the science of correspondence? It was that everything that you looked at in the world had a correspondence with things in the in, in the infinite man's heaven, in his church, and in him. Everything. That's when people started to carve out birds and, uh, and carve out different animals. They would start to carve out lambs and fish. And they would carve these things out and they would sit them in the gardens and they would sit them in the windows. And they would sit them in their yards at home, and they were corresponding. Because when they looked at these things, they saw something spiritual in these things. Remember, they corresponded with things in the spiritual world, in the world where you were going to wake up after you die, in the, in the world that the angels were in. They corresponded to those things. Uh, horses, they would carve out horses and, and uh, deer and, and uh, lambs and sheep and, and goats and all of these things and all different kinds of birds. They would carve these things out and they would sit them in their homes and yards and, and in the gardens and everything. And when they looked at these things, they would see something spiritual in them. And they would correspond to the things that was in the spiritual world. Remember, the Adams and Eve people used to talk directly to the angels. They they, they, they didn't have to have a correspondence. They would say, well, yeah, this this here over in this world, it corresponds to this and this world. And they could talk about it. But after that church died out, then you had to know you still had the signs of correspondence that the Noah people and the races in the world at that time was uh, perfected. The hieroglyphics in Egypt was nothing but signs of correspondence. You can look now. If you see anything in Egypt, they got all kind of lamb drawn and uh, fish and different birds and everything in the hieroglyphics. All the hieroglyphics were was signs of correspondence. The Egypt, the Egyptians had picked up on the signs of correspondence and this is the way that they wrote it in their tablets and everything and carved it in their things in, in all of their carved work. It was just the signs of correspondence. So, but at the end of this time, when the, when the Egyptians began to uh, uh, decline, you had this, uh, the Israelites had become the slaves of the Egyptians. They believed, they didn't believe in a, in a 
believe in God. They believed in a in these symbol gods. I think it was a one was a big black bird. It was just a idol, 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 ladders worship, idol worship. That's what it was. And so the Egypts, Egyptians, they worship idols. But the uh, slave Israelites, they still worship a living God, whom they call at the time they didn't know his name. But this is when the Moses church came. Now, this is the third church. After the Noah church came, and it was dying out because the Israelites, they had been captured by the uh, Egyptian. There was a lot of wars going on, and, 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 and racist people had created their own God, and there was a lot of out of later worship going on. But the Egyptians, they kept, the living God alive. They, they, they knew it was a living God, but they didn't really at this time know who it was. And they were wondering, why would their God keep them in slavery for all of those years? They were slaves to, they built all of these pyramids for the Egyptians. They, and I think if, you, if you've seen the Ten Commandments, that will give you an idea of, of, of how this church came about. So you had the Adam and Eve church, Noah and Ox Church. Now you got Moses getting ready to come and bring the third church into the world. And this is what he did. He was he was the one that was. They knew that it was a Messiah coming. The Egyptians did, and his 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 uh spiritual men told him, "Say, well, it's a it's a it's a God coming that, and it's going to be somebody." out of these people gonna bring about that new new God in the world. So this is when when uh Pharaoh said, well we can't have that. The new king, we can't have another king besides me. What can we do? So somebody came up with the idea to kill every firstborn male Israelite kid. And that's what they do. He had his uh, killers, his swordsmen, go around in all of the, the uh, neighborhoods and all, everywhere that was Israelite in Egypt and killed the firstborn baby, firstborn uh, male baby. But Moses' mother, she put him in a little basket, took him down on the, uh, the river, the Nile, I think it was. I think that's the river. Took him down there, and this is this is a true history here. So yeah, I know y'all can kind of catch up a little bit. She took him and put it in the in the and his little sister pushed him out in the reeds in the in the river, and the basket floated on down to Pharaoh to where Pharaoh's sister was, and her court of uh, female attendants, and she found the baby, and she sent the uh sent the attendants, her attendants away, and she took little Moses up, and she raised him as her own, her own kid, although he was a Hebrew. That's what they call him. He was a Hebrew. And he got and he and he was raised up and he was in the court of the Pharaoh and he became a great warrior and you know his name was you know known throughout all the land. He was a great conqueror. But in actuality he was a Hebrew slave. He was he was born from Hebrew slaves. Now, when they found that out, they banished him. And he went out in the, in the, in the desert, and he came into a land uh, above this mountain. And he, he met up with people who worshipped a living God, and they said that this God lived on the mountain. And since Moses, he had all of this uh, Egyptian training, and he wanted to uh, speak to God himself and find why would you let these uh, Egyptians keep these people in slavery if you are their God? Why? He wanted some answers from God, so to speak. He became a shepherd down in that valley below them. He took him a wife, and uh, and he would hear that 
mountain rumbling and he would see the fire up there all the time. And uh, so he, he decided to go up on that mountain to see and see if he could speak with God or see what was all going on with him. And he did. He went up on the mountain and God did, told him that when he got up to where the burning bush was, and uh, uh, it wasn't any burning bush, but that's the way the Ten Commandments had. He just met with the infinite man, who was not a man at this time, but he met with Moses by means of one of his angels. He took the body of one of his angels, and then that's where he talked to Moses. He didn't talk to a burning bush, but that's where it looked up on the mountain. It looked like something was burning, and they just automatically called it the burning bush. But he, he talked to God personally. But he but God, who was not a man at this time, who was not had been not a flesh and blood man at this time, he was not a man, but was a spirit, he talked to Moses through an angel. And he told him what he wanted him to do. He wanted him to go and uh tell Pharaoh to, to let his people go. See, all of this is just, the genuine truth, because I think you've seen it. And Moses went out, and uh, he got a staff, and he went out, and him and his brother Aaron started going to see the Pharaoh. And the Pharaoh didn't know who he was at first, but then he, after a while he recognized that this was Moses. And the old Pharaoh had died, and the, and the brother that he had grew up with, Ramesses, was the, was the Pharaoh then. And he noticed that that was Moses, the one I had sent out in the desert. And now he have the nerve to come back here and tell me to let my, my slaves go. And to tell me that his God is going to punish me if I don't. And see, and they thought Moses was, was insane too. But he had the power of the infinite man behind him. And nobody can stand up against that power. I mean, no one, nowhere in the universe stand up against that. But Pharaoh, he did. He wouldn't let the, he wouldn't let the uh, slaves go. And Moses came to him a few times and did some stuff with his, with his staff, but it didn't convince Ramesses to uh, let the uh, people go until it came a curse that Ramesses put on Moses and them, the Israelites uh, people that their firstborn would be killed. But he had actually put a curse on his own race. And then when he discovered that his son was going to die, he started changing his tune then. He wanted to make a deal. He told him, I'll let you go and let my son, and my son die. And Moses told him it was too late for that. He said, but you still going to have to let these slaves go. You got to let them go. And that's what happened. He did eventually let them go, and they wandered out in the wilderness for a long time trying to feel their way out. There's thousands and thousands of these slaves that left uh, Egypt. And after they got so far away, uh, the, the, uh, the Bible and all of the religious leaders said that, that, that uh, Ramesses took his army and went to the, uh, the slay all of the Moses and all of that. And then it said that, you know, a pillar of fire kept them from uh, getting to them one time. And then uh, when they came to the ocean, to the sea, uh, they parted the sea and, and the, the Moses was able to go through. You know, they, they did a good job in the Ten Commandments when they made that scene where the water parted. And they say they did that with some jello or something like that. But it looked really real that the, the waves, the water dried up and uh, they was able to pass over to the other side. And then when they got on the other side, then Ramesses sent his army down in, the, in that ocean there. And I thought, I said, that is really stupid. If he doesn't let them get this far, you know he's not going to let you get to them now. All you're doing is just sacrificing your army, and that's what and that's what it was. You know, when they got off in there trying to get across the ocean, the water came back and drowned them. But 
But this didn't really happen. And uh, he didn't, uh, didn't any see uh, see part. Because think about it. Man. Just think about it. If you were to try to cross the Atlantic Ocean or any ocean whatsoever, just think how deep that is. Huh? Just think how deep down there, even if you parted the water back, how deep you would have to go down to the bottom in order to try to cross over. And then it would be like a climbing up a mountain. And these people had mules and oxen and stuff like that. So just think about it common sense. That you couldn't part the sea so anybody could do it across because it would be too deep. You couldn't. You couldn't do it. You would go down so far and so far down. Then you couldn't go up on the other side. You wouldn't have any way to get up on the other side. Yeah. But this was the correspondence. Like I told you, the, the correspondence, all that means that he kept them from sinning, from going through all kinds of sins that they had learned from the Egyptians. You know, the other later was worship and all of this stuff. All of the committing of dirty stealing and scheming and all of these things that they had learned from the Egyptians, he took them through that sea, which was a hell, which was really a hell, and he brought them through on the other side, which was to make them uh, members of the church again. Now he he went he was going to take them up. He took them up on the uh, on the mountain. And uh, while they was up there, while Moses was up on the mountain, getting the, the commandments for them to live by, this is the, the third church. Remember, the Adam's and Eve church, Noah and Lodge church, the Moses church, for people in this world to live by. Just simple as that. Just to live by. You got to have a, a church to live by in this world. Now, when Moses come back down with the Ten Commandments, he had five that you had to do for God and five you had to do for the name. But when he came back down, he heard a lot of noise going on. The people had got out of control. They had not made Aaron build them a, a, a gold calf that they were dancing around and just all kind of debauchery and, and dancing and whole mongering going on. And when he came down, he said, look at you. Look what you, look what you've become. And he told him, say, all of those who believe in, want to go with God and with me, come over on this side. And all of those who want to go with the devil, go with them. He throw those commandments down there on the gold cab and it hit it, load up. That's where it, it happened uh, with the movie thing. And it was a good uh, uh, picture, a good analogy. And all of those that was want to be, they, they fell down through the uh, crevices and in the ground and they was sunk, uh, covered up and all of the rest of them they followed Moses on to the uh, Canaan, the uh, promised land and uh, in the meantime he, he, he uh, read, wrote the Ten Commandments so that they would have something to live by. Now this was the third church and they lived by these rules and these uh, Laws for a long time, long time, and they ended up over there in uh in Rome. Now, now they're they've come out of the being in slavery to the Egyptians. Now they've been conquered by the Romans because at one time the Romans was the most powerful nation in the world. They 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 was over everybody. In the world, yeah, the Romans were. Their armies could conquer everybody and anybody in the world. And it was by providence that, that God had it because they were creating things. They were creating waterworks and, and uh, creating laws and different uh, kinds of uh, industries and different things like this. So it was providence that David was the one that did it, uh, was the one that was the uh, the uh, conquer of the whole world at one point in time. But by the by, they began to uh, decline until they was uh, overrun at some point in time by different nations. And, uh, they got weak and uh, 
other armies and other countries that got stronger. But the but the uh but the Hebrews who was now was the Jews, uh they wanted this is when Jesus came into the world. This was when uh, and when Jesus came into the world, you remember that story. It was Christmas. This was Christmas when Mary, when the uh, angel came to Mary and told her that she would uh, create something holy inside her and that she would bring about a uh, child and, and that child would be called Jesus, be called the Son of God. They didn't say he would be the Son of God. They say that he would be called the Son of God. And I don't understand how people can get that mixed up. Oh, he's the son of God, all right. No, the angel said he would be called the son of God. Just because you are called something, if somebody call you someone's son, it doesn't really mean that you are really their son. And this is what it was with, with Jesus. He was called the son of God. And when uh, he came into the world, that was the uh, fourth church that would come into the world, which was called the Christian church. And there's and that, that church is still going on now, although it's a dead church. <laughs> and, and you can tell that by the way people, all these evangelists, all they want is money, all of the whole money is going on, the thievery and stealing and victimizing people through the uh, ministry and these preachers uh, turning their flocks into a, a cult like Jim Jones did time and took them off in Afghanistan and made them drink poison Kool-Aid. This is because the Christian church is a dead church. Jesus established that church when he was in the world. And they would be called Christian. And that church went on for hundreds of years and people really got their needs met through the Christian church because they were able to love the Lord Loved the name for a long time. And they did this, and it came all the way up until the 1700s. And this is when the fifth and final church came into existence through a man that Jesus uh, uh, chose, who was known as Emmanuel Swedenborg. Now, that was the fifth church that came into the world. And that's the one that's in the, in the world now. But it it won't be known for years and years and years. It's just a few it's just a few people uh, that even know about the writings and the new church that the infant man Jesus had put into the world since the old Christian church is that. I know a lot of Christians gonna be cussing and calling me names and stuff like that. But it's not me. I'm just a messenger. I'm just bringing it to you. If you want to censor somebody, censor Emmanuel Swedenborg and his writings. Because that was who brought all of this knowledge and information into the world. Because he was intromitted into that spiritual world back in uh, 1750, 54, something like that. And he was able to see all of this, this, this heaven in the spiritual world. And he was able to talk with uh, uh, spirits from other planets to find out what they were like over there. So this is the way it was. Now you got the five churches in the world. You see how everything was created. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the planet, the inhabitants on the planet Mercury. The scientists, since Mercury is the closest one to the planet, to the sun, all the scientists and all of the, the, the uh, scholars and, and intellectual holes, I call them, they, oh, oh, oh couldn't, any, couldn't any people be on, on, on Jupiter, I mean on Mercury, because it's too close to the sun. But once you begin to, to read what uh, the writing said, that the heat from the sun does not heat a planet up because of its closeness to it. It's because of the, of the atmosphere, the density of the atmosphere that surrounds that planet. So the density of the atmosphere around Mercury is so that it can have just as mild a temperature as, it, as this world can. They enjoy the same type of temperature. They enjoy the same kind of life. They, they eat and uh, procreate just like we do on this world. And uh, they, they have animals just like we do on this world. 
Only that world is smaller and the days are shorter and the years shorter. That uh, day in their uh, life is only nine hours compared to our 24 hours. And they are, they are more slender people. They are slender because of the, of the air that they breathe. It, it's more a pure type air that they breathe rather than we breathe. A, a fat person probably couldn't breathe on the air on Mercury because it's too, it, it would be too concentrated and it would be too dense. But the people on Mercury who are thin and who was and who was placed there by the infinite man, they breathe that air and they live a life just like anybody else does. But people think because it's so close to the sun, it couldn't possibly be any people on it. But if the divine man created the planet and he wanted people to be on there, don't you think he would create the atmosphere and he would have it just as comfortable on their planet as he as he did on the third planet, which is Earth, of course he would, and that's what he did. And to and to show you that it's not the close to the sun is it, is it, where it's where the heat come from. Just think about over in countries, hot countries, where it's hot down below the mountain, but up on top of the mountain there's snow. Now explain. If if it was if it was if it's because of the closer you get to the sun, the hotter it gets. Why would there be snow on top of mountains in hot uh, areas and hot zones? So that throws that myth out the, out the window, don't it? It's not because of how close you are to the sun. It's because of the atmosphere. The aura of the atmosphere that was around Mercury, it, 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 it creates an atmosphere for them to breathe and for them to uh, do the same thing we do on this world. And that is live and follow the infinite man's commandment to love him and the neighbor. And, and, the, and there are some of the people on Mercury, they are able to talk to angels like they did back on our planet back uh, in ancient times, in most ancient times, they are still able to do that. So they know that they're going to live after death, and they don't, they're not too, they're not hung up on worldly things. They just procreate, raise their children up to be orderly, and uh, wait to their time to die, which is about 35 or 40 years old. Uh, that's what the writings say. They live to be about 35, 40 years old. And uh, they know when the time is coming, and they just, when they die, they just take them out and lay them out in the woods, and that's the last of their one, uh, time on that earth. But they know that they're going to be living, so it, it's not a big deal like it is down here. I mean, you have funerals down here, people be crying, and, oh, it's all over, we'll never see them again. But that's not true. But it's just only because people down here are so worldly, and, and, and they believe everything in the world, they believe all there is. So just think about what I've shared with you and run it back through you and ruminate it in your mind because it all is the genuine truth. The universe here, everybody, all of those planets have people on them and they live a life just like we live here, which means that you are able to eat and you're able to procreate and have a place to stay and <clears throat> have a place to sleep. And but the only thing about this world is that this is the only planet in the universe that have writings and paper, and you can write stuff out, and you can get a blueprint out, and you can be a you can be a houses and buildings and all stuff like that. They build their homes out of what they find in the forest, out of the trees, out of huts, and a lot of this is done over in Africa where they they build huts out of wood. They don't have a blueprint, but they do build them a place to stay and place to live. And this is what they do on other planets. And this is why we can build, uh, Elon Musk and uh, Ben Zodell can build a, a rocket because they can get a blueprint. And they can uh, draw it up, get the material, and they can put it together, and they can build it, just like all of the buildings and the skyscrapers we can build here. But this is the only planet that they can do that. Now, 
I'm going to share a little th something about the uh, UFOs. They want me to share something about that. UFOs, people, do not come from other planets because, just like I just said, they would have to have a blueprint to build a spaceship or anything that, like these people have seen uh, as a UFO. But they did see these things. And you can see it now. If you are out at night and the atmosphere and the magnetic uh, mechanism in the earth, in the, around the earth and in the atmosphere, if it's right, you can see these things. But they don't come from outer space. They come from the spiritual world. All you have done now is that your eyes is open to the spiritual world, the world that I told you was first created. And all that's being done over there is that intellectual hordes and scientists over there are experimenting, doing things over there like they like to do over in this world. And when they do those things over there, this is the way it is presented in this world. If you get a chance to see it, then it's, it's something that was created and that's going on in the spiritual world that you get a, a glimpse of in this world and then it's gone. That's why it would. That's why it would disappear. Uh, uh, people who have been in flying in planes and seen these things, these uh, vehicles, they they say it, these jets and, and uh, uh, flying saucers and everything. This is why they could disappear so fast. Is because they would just disappear back into the world of spirits. And this is why how people see those things. They they not they they actually see them. But they're not coming from outer space. They're coming from the world of spirits. And that's what you've got to, to understand. Now, before I close, I just want you to know that all of it, all Emmanuel Swedenborg done was to master all known knowledge in the world and then take us on further. And that's what he did. That's why I'm able to have all of this knowledge I got and able to share it with you. And everything I said was the divine truth. I mean, not the divine truth, but the genuine truth. And it came from the divine truth and the divine wisdom is where it comes from. Now, the divine, now the genuine truth is a trademark of the organism chapter four professional development process. I'm the only one that can use this. And if you want to, uh, Get a t-shirt like mine. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you where you can get one. You know, there's no hurry to get one because if you can uh, receive what I've shared with you today through this video, then you can go on and live a comfortable life knowing that it's not going to be all over when you die, uh, when someone you love dies. It's just a, a temporary separation. From the people. I know I'm going to see my mother over there when I get over there and my brother. I know I'm going to see him and all of my best friends in time. I know that they are over there and I'm going to get a chance to, to look at them and see their smiling face again and, and, and reminisce and have a reunion with all of my, my uncles, my grandmothers, and my aunties and all of these. See, I know that. That's why I don't, I'm not concerned about death now. Uh, I'm just waiting to my time comes. And whenever it comes, then hey, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna probably gonna be kind of looking forward to it and uh and uh be looking forward to a happy reunion over there. Because now I know that all of the all of the creation of the universe and uh and why it was created. The last thing I'm gonna tell you is why the universe was created. Nobody ever discuss that. No scientists ever say, well, the Big Bang happened because of this. They, didn't say, they never said, explain why things happen. They always look at the effects of it and try to find the cause of it, and that's it. But the end of creation and why the infinite man created it was to have a heaven from the human race. Think about that for a second. They created, he created the universe 
so that there could be a heaven from the human race. Just think about it. Everybody on earth, they think about, hey, I want to be in heaven one day to go to church. I want to be in heaven with God one day. And that's okay because that was the reason that he created you in the first place. So to do Now, heaven is going to be a, a happy place throughout all eternity. You'll grow young again. You'll be 18. The, the male will be about 17 or 18. And the female will be about 15 or 16. The rest of eternity in heaven. And they'll be happy. You have your mate. Y'all will be happy. Y'all will be enjoying everything, all of the blessedness and things that heaven has to offer. That was why the infinite man created the universe in the first place. That's all I have to share with you in this session. And I'm anxious to move on.